Hello everyone, this is Matthew Yu. In today's video, we are going to share a great use case on how to load Microsoft Forms data into Power BI. My problem statement is, I want to have a Microsoft Forms survey created and distributed, and then I want Power BI to auto-refresh the latest result data. How can I do that? Let's get started. For those of you who are not familiar with Microsoft Forms, it is a service offered by Microsoft that allows you to create some service, as you can see from the screenshot. So some quick summary of this product. It is very easy to create service, quizzes, and polls, and very easy to distribute through web page and mobile phone. It is easy to create, uses less than five minutes to learn, and to create your first form. As of today, it's free to Microsoft 365 subscribers, and we didn't see there are any charge license as of February 2021. In today's video, we are going to first walk you through a quick demo and steps to create a Microsoft Forms and link to Power BI. Second, we are going to talk about some use cases on how can you leverage this cool trick. In the last, we are going to talk about some Q&A for some advanced questions. Before I start, there are some quick notes. First is all the UI that I'm going to demo is based on February 2021. The second piece is, I assume you already have some basic knowledge on Microsoft Forms, and I will skip some basic concepts and go straight to create the form. Let's get started. There are four steps to do so. First, we are going to create a group if you don't have one, and then we are going to create a group forms. Let's get started. I'm going to open my browser and type in Microsoft Forms. The first result is the forms.office.com. Click and go in. I already logged into my account. You will see there are two pieces on this page. On the top, there are personal forms that I already have. And at the bottom, there are the groups that I am in. We are going to use a group form instead of personal form, and I will explain later. If you don't have a dedicated group, or you don't have any group, don't worry, let's go and create one. There are a lot of ways to create group. The easiest way that I can think is going to the Outlook module. Let's click the left side and go to Outlook. It will open your mailbox. From the left side of your screen, scroll down, and you will see all the groups that you are in. There's one thing called new group. Let's click that. Here, I will type in my group name. I will name this group Power BI Forms Demo Group, and I will hit Create. When the group is created, the system will give you some option to add some colleagues and members into this group so you can work together on this survey. We are going to skip for now. And here my group has been created. Let's go back to Microsoft Forms. I will refresh this page by hitting the reload button. I found the group I just created at the bottom. It says total zero forms. Click into this group. This is the page that you will see. And it says no recent group forms. We can create a new one now. Let's click the big green button says new group form. Let's get started to create our first group form. First, we are going to enter the title. The title is my February 2021 event survey. And there's some description. I will enter the description for thank you for attending the event. Then I will start to create my question. The first one, I will make a written question with all the stars. And it is a required. The question is, please rate our event. Done. Second question, I will make that a choice question. My question will be, what day do you prefer for our next event? And you can see Microsoft Forms is super smart and they will put in all of the suggested fields for you. I will hit add all. From Sunday to Saturday. Third question, I will also hit add new. This time it will be a text. My question will be, please provide feedback to our event. This time I'll put in wrong answer. This is not a required field. That's it. I will put in a theme. I will take some suggestions from the system and put in here. Now I will enter the preview to preview my form. 
and this is a mobile version. Cool, we finished our form. Look how easy it is. Now let's start to fit in some test data. I hit preview. In the computer version, I will start to fit in three surveys. For the first question, I will put in five star, Sunday, and test one. Hit submit button. It says, thanks, your response has been submitted. Now I will hit submit another response for another test. This time I will rate it four stars. Also Sunday, test two. Submit. Let's put in the last one. Five stars, Wednesday, test three. That's it, great. Now I have some test data here. Let's enter the second step to extract the result link. I will hit back and go into the response here. I have three results that I just entered. As you can see from here, on the right part of your screen, you will see there's Excel icon and shows open Excel. Let's click this. Before we extract the link, let's take a look at this Excel. This Excel is a master result sheet that is created by SharePoint and the Microsoft Forms. The first five columns are the system generate column from A to E. Let's zoom a little bit. Column A is the sequential ID when your user start filling your survey. Column B is the start time when your user starts. Column C is when they hit the submit button. It is very useful for the teachers giving quizzes to the students. Column D is the email address for that user if they logged into Microsoft Forms before they entered the survey. And column E is the name that's associated with this email. The remaining columns are the questions. Look at the header. Each of the header is our question body. In my demo, my first question is please rate our events. This body matches this column header, and the star is matching a number in the column. The second one is which day do you prefer for our next event? And the user choices has been recorded. The last thing is Please provide your feedback to our event. And the answer I entered has been here. That's it. Now let's extract the link for Power BI. From this Excel page, I will hit the File button from the top left corner. Then I will hit Info. In the Info, the first choice is Open in Desktop app. I will hit that. And I will allow this by clicking Open Excel from Chrome. Now the Excel is opened. I will again hit File in my Excel desktop. From here, I will also hit Info button. There is a copy path. This is the link that we will need. I will click this to copy the path. Of course, you can paste this link at a location or a notepad. We will save this for later. Now, let's enter the third step to go into Power BI. This is a brand new Power BI report from Power BI Desktop. I will hit Get Data and select Web. Now, I will paste the link I just copied from the Excel Desktop. And you can take a look, and it will end with question mark web equals 1. If your link doesn't end with question mark web equals 1, I suggest you to go back to previous step and check. Here, I will highlight start from the question mark to web equals 1 and type delete. So my URL will end with xlxx. I will hit OK. In this case, you will see an authentication page. Do not click connect with anonymous. Please go into organizational account and click sign in button here. And sign in with your account, then click connect. After passing the authentication, you will see there's a table one that I have. If I click the table one, see the preview. This is the form that I just entered. 
and the result data. I will check this and click load. After it is loaded, you will see all the data is on the right side. I will use this to make some quick reports. All right, I made a quick Power BI report with some pie chart, some average reading, and some word cloud custom visual. Here, I'm going to show you how Power BI already linked to the SharePoint by entering some new test result and refresh this report. I will go back to my Microsoft Forms, go back to my survey. Here, I'm going to enter some new test data by going to the preview. For this, I will just put in one star, maybe Monday, test one, submit. And then I will hit some other test result. Now I will submit a third one, two star, Wednesday, test one, submit. All right, once it's submitted, we can just wait for a couple more minutes and let's click refresh button in Power BI. And you can see the rate dropped and all my data already in there. This is how fast that is. Now I will save my report and I will publish that and to schedule the refresh. I will hit publish button and upload into my workspace. My report name is Power BI Forms Demo, February 28th. Let's go into the data set. From my Power BI webpage, I will go into the data sets and find my data. I will click the open menu and click the schedule refresh. Right now, my web has a disconnection. I will enter my credential. In here, do not use anonymous. I will use OSAN2 and I will hit sign in. In the last, I will go into schedule refresh and turn that on. I can set up some time so the report can go in and fetch the data from the SharePoint. Click apply. That's it. We completed everything. Now our survey result will be always up to date in Power BI. And this concludes our demo. Let's talk about some use cases on how this can aid you with your daily analysis. First, you can simply input the result into Power BI, and then you can slice by date time some people or some other columns for your advanced analysis. The second is you can also use Power BI Word Cloud Custom Visual to create some visual like this. The third thing is you can also use Power BI Text Analysis or Azure ML in the query editor to do some additional insights. The second piece is you can also import multiple survey results into one Power BI report. So you have one dashboard combines all your survey results from all the different divisions. It's very good for the leadership team to view your results in one page. And the third piece is you can also combine with your other data. For example, because Power BI supports multiple data composite, so you can view your sales and the customer satisfaction survey side by side. You can even join and merge by the name, by email address, or some specific answer with your other data, maybe from a SQL database. For example, you can join by the name so you can see the customer basic information and their recent response and feedback side by side. It is very cool. And the last, you guys might have some other cool ideas. If you have more, please leave the comments below and share with other people. That's it. Now let's go into the Q&A for some advanced questions. The first question is, why are we using group form? Can we use personal form instead? The answer is yes and no. Let's take a look at the screenshots that I got from the personal form. The page or the menu didn't give us the option to find out where the link is, but it just gave you a direct download like this. If you enter this link, you will only download a blob file. So it is missing some of the backend processing steps if you just go direct download. Of course, some of you may be very advanced to extract this from the page source to find out, but 
I feel it is better for most of people to just use group form for the easiest experience. And what is more, take a look at this title. This title will tell you how many people are there, which means the name is not consistent. Because of this, it is hard to refresh the data. So in this case, it is good only if you are doing the one-time extract and no need to refresh the data, you can definitely use the personal one. Other than that, for the easiest experience, you can use the group form. The second question is, after I created and deployed my form and I want to make changes on the form, will that work and will my Power BI break? The short answer is yes, you can definitely change your forms and most of the cases, Power BI will not break. And if you're not sure, you can use the preview and submit a few responses to test. Let's go into each of the cases. This is a master result sheet that I created for another demo. Let's take a look at this data. The first thing is if you delete a question after you deploy, so no new answer for the question will be recorded. As you can see here, I deleted the column F question and the new survey data will not have data for this column. And of course, in Power BI, you can delete this column F in the query editor so it doesn't show up and take your memory. The second case is if I added a new column, column K halfway, what will happen? So the previous result will be blank and your new results will show up. So the only thing you need to know is you need to adjust your Power BI logic if necessary. For example, your average, you can make sure to filter out those columns so it doesn't drag down your average. The third is the hardest thing, is you want to change the question body. So the column header for this will be changed because all those are the question body and all responses will remain there. In this case, you need to know Power BI might break because the header got changed. I can guarantee you all of those are 100% fixable, but if you need some deep dive and the patience to go into the query editor and check, the fix is going to the query editor to find out which steps that referred to the old column names, and you're going to change that into the new column name, or you can delete those steps. And you can also double check there's a step called change type. It always causes a problem. You can delete that step or modify the step in the advanced query editor. If all of the above sound a little bit hard to understand, you can definitely call Power BI support for the free help. And pro users can get one-on-one -on -one free consulting with the Microsoft support team. And I put the link here. That's it. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video is helpful. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave in the comment section below. I will see you next time and have a good day.